Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, the story of the minister and the dominatrix might make for titillating headlines, but despite four national newspapers investigating the story, not one decided to publish. The Culture Secretary, John Whittingdale, has admitted that two years ago he had a relationship with a sex worker. He says he didn't know about the woman's occupation and ended the relationship when he found out. But the Labour Party say the unpublished story left Mr Whittingdale vulnerable to pressure from newspapers and so he should no longer be involved in making decisions about the regulation of the press. Our political editor, Gary Gibbon, reports. Morning, Mr. Whittingdale. John Whittingdale said in a statement last night that even though he knew newspapers were sitting on a story about his private life, it hadn't influenced any decisions he'd taken on press regulation. Labour said the Culture Secretary had left himself open to pressure from the newspapers and should withdraw from having anything to do with newspaper regulation. He's entitled to his private life, but I think to the extent that you get a perception of undue influence, uh, on a cabinet minister, then I think that's something the cabinet minister themselves would want to put right by stepping back from making the decisions that, that might be unduly influenced. And, and I think if he were to do that, that would be a sensible approach. There's a through the looking glass quality to all of this. Newspapers discover a Tory MP has had a relationship with a sex worker. There's photographic evidence. The MP goes on to join the cabinet and still they don't publish. And then campaigners against intrusive journalism turn round and say the newspapers should have splashed on the story. The campaigners believe the newspapers were self-censoring because in John Whittingdale they had someone who was on their side, resistant to the sort of regulation of newspapers that the Leveson report had demanded. Should the newspapers ultimately have published this story about John Whittingdale and his relationship? I think there's a very in, uh, important public interest defence in doing so. Um, the allegations that have been published raise a question about the possibility of undue influence and raises a question about whether some of the national newspapers um, had some power uh, over, the, uh, over the culture secretary, John Whittingdale, and whether that influenced his decisions. Number 10 said they didn't know about the relationship when the Prime Minister appointed Mr Whittingdale to the Cabinet, but Mr Cameron had full Everyone confidence in the culture secretary. In another through-the-looking-glass twist in this tale, the squeaky-clean independent tries to look into why its more scurrilous rival newspapers are sitting on an investigation and then, it's alleged, sits on its own story. No explanation was given as to why we were stopping it, but it was later explained to us by other senior journalists in the paper that essentially the independent was, if you like, a tenant of the Daily Mail building in Kensington where IT support, um, security, everything else that a tenant has is delivered by the Daily Mail. It was explained to me directly um, that John Whittingdale was regarded as an asset by the Daily Mail and that this story would effectively take that asset away from them. The Independent denied that allegation. Could the fact he knew the newspapers knew about an embarrassing story have influenced John Whittingdale's decision to hold back on implementing the Leveson recommendations? Some argue he and Number 10 changed tack because the election result made it possible. It could simply be that it isn't this incredible conspiracy theory that everybody's trying to whip up. It could simply be that he actually doesn't think it was a very good idea and that a new government, not in coalition, uh, was able to look at the thing again. John Whittingdale is one of the cabinet ministers who decided to back the Leave campaign. In such tense political times, Number 10 is keen to dampen down an MP's private life story. And for once, it's got some critical newspapers on the same page. Well, with me now to discuss this is Dr Evan Harris from the pressure group Hacked Off and from Westminster, the Conservative MP Damien Collins, who sits on the Culture, Media and Sport Committee. Evan Harris first. He's got a colourful private life, served lots of politicians before and since. So what? Yeah, so it's not about whether those three newspapers ought to or ought not to have published that story. Those are the, the Mail, uh, the People, and the Mail on Sunday, the People and the Sun. Uh, there may or may not have been public interest justifications, which James Cusick the, says there were, but generally we would say 
that those newspapers would be right not to publish that story on its own. But the fact is that week in, week out, they do publish those stories. And the Independent found, or the Independent Investigation found, that the reason they didn't was not due to a newfound interest in ethics, but was because they thought they could influence his position. And his position has changed. OK. Because prior to... Prior to his position, he, uh, he backed Leveson Part 2, that's the investigation into the cover-up. Mm -hmm. In fact, he pressed for it, and he also voted for the Royal Charter Leveson reforms as a backbencher. He could, and um, plenty of backbenchers on the Conservative side voted against, so his position has changed, okay, let me that's put, troubling. Hang on, let, me, let me put that to Damien Collins. That's troubling. His posi position has changed. He's reneged on a government promise to deliver a key part of the deal on press regulation, and this could be why. Well, no, I think there are a couple of important points here. He's not reneged on it at all. There are several parts here. From Leveson Part 1, uh, we've seen substantial progress being made. We've seen the creation of the independent self-regulatory body. We've seen one of the incentives for newspapers to join that body come into place in November last year, which is that they get exemption from uh, extreme damages awards against them if they're part of a proper self-regulatory body. The Secretary of State is considering the issue of whether papers that are part of self-regulation and these new bodies should be exempt from costs as well. And the government has said that the decision on to, to go ahead with Leveson Part 2, which Evan Harris is talking about, will be taken once the current criminal proceedings relating to Leveson that, Part 1 that, have concluded. And I think that is absolutely the right thing to do. Uh, John Whittingdale set that out in his speech at the Society okay, of Editors last year. All right. But that's, but that's wrong, Harris. because the Prime Minister said we will go ahead with Leveson Part 2. All public inquiries will often have two parts because there's criminal proceedings. Will, and John, John Whittingdale said, it will take place. The Dowler family, I was in the meeting, were promised it will take place. Now okay. the line is it might take place. OK, and, do, and let, let me just put that to Damien Collins. The press had power over him on this, on this story, and he then had a reason to go easy on them in the Leveson regulations. I think that's wrong, and I think today we've seen a lot of people insinuating things that they can't prove, exploiting someone's personal circumstances, in many ways exhibiting many of the qualities they're so critical of the newspapers for exhibiting. There's no evidence that John Whittingdale has been influenced about this at all. His position as Secretary of State and the government's position has been incredibly clear on this, okay. and we've made progress on implementing well, Leveson's recommendations. Well, there's okay. no there's no insinuation. There's no proof. It's quite clear. Who can tell? You can't look into the mind of someone. But the fact is that Parliament passed this law, this other incentive, on costs. Hang on, you've just admitted there's no proof. I, so then exactly, Fleet but, Street's just... finest looked at this story. They realised he hadn't broken any laws, he hadn't broken any parliamentary rules. The relationship had finished before he became a cabinet minister. What then was the justification yeah. well, for publishing say, this story? Won't let me finish the other point, but just to do with that point, they didn't find he hadn't broken any parliamentary rules. If he has a perceived conflict of interest, i.e. he knew the newspapers knew this, he could have told the Prime Minister privately on appointment and the Cabinet Secretary, look, there's this, it's not going to affect my decisions, but I don't want you to be ambushed. But just coming back to this other Leveson Part 1 incentive, Pretty that was passed by Parliament and every Secretary of State simply signs a commencement order to bring it into effect. He's decided to, to hold back on that and have power over the press with a pen, with, with just a pure executive discretion over whether to punish or please the newspapers, why did he take that power when there was no indication that any other Secretary of State would have? Damien Collins, uh, John Whittendale never wanted to fully implement Leveson because of his connection with the Murdoch press. That's the allegation. Yeah, and it's, it's one that uh, is a, a completely spurious allegation that people can't substantiate, and I think it's wrong for it to be thrown around in this way. Uh, he has made progress on implementing Leveson. He set out in his speech in November, in October last year, to the Society of Editors his approach to Leveson. That hasn't changed. And I think there are, has been substantial reform. I think he's right to say this new measure is in place now, so there is a financial incentive for newspapers to sign up for one of the new recognised regulatory bodies. If they do, they can be exempt from exemplary damages awarded against them. He wants to see uh, what behaviour that, uh, that, that inspires from the newspapers, whether they, they respond to that before making a decision about whether to exempt newspapers from costs as well. Uh, if they sign up for self-regulation. So okay. I think there is real, pro there is real progress. I'm sorry, we could, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, view, Evan Harris. John Whittingdale never did. And we could argue about this until the cows come home. Uh, Damien Collins, Evan Harris, thank you very much for joining me. I've been getting away with it all.